Hey guys, this is Chris from ThemeBudget.com and I'm back with another tutorial. Uh, this one will be about how to add a sitemap to your Beans Powered site without using a plugin. Um, so to see what we're going to be working towards, here's an example from a site I recently launched and this is what you'd then use to submit to the various search engines like Google and Bing and uh, what not. Um, normally you would use a plugin for this but um, thanks to some help from Terry um, we can now do this without a plugin and um, obviously that's just one, one less thing to load. Um, so yeah, I've set up a fresh WordPress install. I created a uh, blank child theme based on the starter child theme. Um, which I'll make available on the theme button blog. So I'm going to just go ahead and activate that. And now if we head over to the code, you'll see this is just what you normally get in a uh, in the child theme. Although there was also a less file that I've removed just because it doesn't it's not relevant to this tutorial. Um, so you'll see we've got the empty functions and just the normal CSS which adds all the theme information. So the first thing that we're going to do is in our functions uh, we're add a redirect that whenever we access sitemap.xml it'll automatically load the sitemap.php that we have in our child theme um, and that then will allow us to go and grab all the posts and pages and other post types to display in the sitemap. For now we'll just grab this um, from the functions.php, which is in the, uh, the, the example, the tutorial zip. Um, and let's just paste that into the functions. What that's doing is essentially adding a filter, which is going to intercept any requests made to sitemap.xml, and it's going to automatically, from the stylesheet directory, load the sitemap.php. For this example, we're going to have the sitemap in the child theme root, um, but if you had it in a includes folder or something similar, you would then um, obviously add uh, includes, so something like that. But in this case, we don't need that. So let's just go ahead and then create the sitemap.php. And then we'll just grab from the example code and just paste that in. And so what this is doing is it's setting some, some headers uh, just so that it's interpreted as a XML file. Um, and then it's opening up the XML tag um, and then also adding a XML style sheet. Um, if I just expand this, you'll see that it's again pointing to the uh, child theme root. So if you had this in a folder like assets or asset CSS, you would then again update this path. Um, so if you had it in a CSS folder and assets subfolder, then that's what it would look like. But in this case, again, we don't. Um, that's all you need to know about there. And then the only other thing that you need to worry about is the section over here. And this is saying that we want to display all the posts and pages um, in the sitemap. So if you had a, another content, another um, custom post type, for example, um, the site I just launched, I had a custom post type for gems, because um, it's sketch gems. So in that case, we would just go gem and add a comma, and then that would then include all the all the posts from the gem post type. Um, and again, this could this would apply if your site was using WooCommerce, then you would add product um, to this list. Or if you were using Easy Digital Downloads, then it would be download. Um, so yeah, whatever custom post types that you want included, you would just add them here. Um, and you'll notice that this is just a normal WP query. So if there were any pages or posts that you want to exclude, you could just do that the normal way. Um, and you would then just 
add that here. But again, for this, for the purpose of this demo, we don't need any of that. So um, if you do need to exclude any posts um, or pages, you would just do a uh, Google search for excluding posts or pages via WP Query, and there's tons of tutorials. Um, so the last thing that we want to do is just add the sitemap.css that we were referencing. So we'll just say new file and we'll go sitemap.css. Right, so the last step, we're going to just grab the example CSS that's included in the download and we're going to just paste that in. And now if we go and check out the site and append sitemap.xml, we should see an example of it working. We did add a page, I can actually just show you that. So if we go here and we say this is the about page, about us, and maybe a contact page. Let's see, and if we refresh the sitemap, you can see it's automatically added. Um, and then if you added a Another post. Um, this is our new blog, or welcome to our new blog, whatever. We'll publish that, and you'll see it adds up to you. And now, if once once this is done, um, you'll notice this text above and below is just you, is there as an example. Um, you can remove it if you're not using it or change it to something else. If we just remove it, you'll see it gets rid of it. So you could change it to our sitemap and maybe just remove the end part. Oh, no. We just want to be full and voila. Um, yeah, so once you've got that, then you would submit it to Google and they'd be able to valid, uh, validate that it's correct. And once they validate it, then you're good to go. And that'll just automatically let Google know or the search engines in general know um, whenever you change your content. Um, that obviously helps them find it easier. Uh, that's pretty much it. Hope you found it useful. Um, and. Be sure to let me know if there's any other topics that you'd like covered in the tutorials. Cool. Have a great day. Cheers.